What's going on, Average Joe readers, and welcome back to another video. Today, I actually now I'm talking about reading. I want to talk about audiobooks, so listening to books and everything audiobook related. So I'll try not to make this too long, but for a while, a couple of years ago, I had an absolutely atrocious commute to work and I was consuming all kinds of audiobooks. Now, this is very, very at the very start of when I started getting into reading, into fantasy, and uh, consuming books on the regular. But my entire time, I didn't have time to actually read a book. I only consumed them through audiobook. And because I didn't know a whole lot about recommendations and um, I was just kind of searching on my own. This was years before I even knew BookTube was a thing. I just took some sh suggestions from either my wife, uh, her, her mom, or whatever other Amazon search that I found. And that's how I started consuming books. And at first it went, it went really good for a while. And as I started to become more and more of a reader, I, uh, I started picking up, you know, when I started, had time to read physical books again. I still kept audiobooks going because I started working from home and then I would listen to audiobooks while I was cooking or driving or doing like uh, very low, lower intensity uh, conditioning and stuff like that. I consume my books through Audible. I have the, I think I have the one per month uh, subscription for it. There's other times where you can, uh, I'll buy like three credits at once because you get about a discount. Another thing to, to note that I really wanted to highlight is if you do Kindle Unlimited, once again, I'm, I want to make myself known as the Kindle Unlimited guy, it seems, but getting Kindle Unlimited books, if they have an audiobook, that is included with your Kindle Unlimited uh, subscription. So if you have, uh, if you sign up for Kindle Unlimited and you send a bunch of books to your, to your Kindle, if you pull up your Audible and you'll, you might see some new books pop up that were on Kindle Unlimited, they, those are now included. Uh, the audiobook with uh, the regular book on Kindle Unlimited. So that is something that is to definitely look into. If there are books in Kindle Unlimited and you want to listen to audiobook, check those out because there are a ton of titles and they're getting more and more. <clears throat> um, I've never done the listen and read at the same time. I think that's too, just too much. Also, that would require me to buy two of the same, two copies of the same book. And that's just a waste to me. Another thing that's so great about audiobooks and Audible, if you don't like a narrator, this is something that I had to do with the Saxon saga. I got that fourth book and it was the wrong narrator. And I realized it early enough. And so I was able to return it. They gave me back my credit. And then I got the same book with a different narrator. So, and completely free. So even if you get a narrator you don't like, um, you can swap it out for free. This is something I didn't know, and I wish I did, because I probably have four or five DNFs purely based on the narrator's voice and how they read it, and I wish I would have known it because I would have exchanged it and gotten something else, tried some, tried somebody else out. Um, so this is a really, really good thing to know. And another thing to know is uh, don't do it too much or don't completely finish a book and then return it because they'll catch on and you will get banned from ever having ever being able to return books. A friend of mine did that. Uh, right when I found out you can do the exchange, I did a whole bunch of exchanges. And then I found out that you can get banned from doing it. So I stopped because I had no idea that that's how it works. So uh, just be careful with doing it. Don't do it too much. Or if you do it, do it like when you're still in the very early parts of the book that it's you know clear to them you weren't enjoying the narrator. So you don't get banned from ever being able to swap it out because that is something great that's be, uh, be able to do. So I've gone from consuming audiobooks as more of a necessity to just sprinkling them in, in between where I can. But now I've started to notice the more I listen to audiobooks, the more um, I've noticed how much narrators play a part in audiobooks. So I wanted to give some recommendations of audiobooks that I really, really like, and just have a few notes on some other audiobooks. Books in general are now are super subjective on their own. And, uh, you know, some people, even though they think their opinion is absolutely right, and books aren't that subjective, books are entirely very subjective to everybody. Putting in a narrator to audiobook for audiobook, adds another layer to the, to, uh, the subjectiveness of a book. Meaning you could take the same book and have three different narrators audio, uh, narrate that book. 
and get three different experiences from that same book because of the narrator. And that's why sometimes audiobooks either fail or succeed to me, at least when I listen to them, because a narrator can impact the listening experience so much. I personally don't like narrators that try and do too much, that do too much with the voices, that try and make the characters their own. To me, the characters and uh, the it should be about the writing and what the author wrote uh, had the characters be, not the narrator, how they're doing their voices. There's been a few times where I've been pulled out of a story because the the character voices got pretty annoying and a little bit too over the top. I think there should be changes and fluctuations and you know small accents put on so you know who's talking, but just enough of a distinction so you know who's talking, not. Uh, I'm, I'm picturing like when they're recording the audiobook, I'm picturing they have glasses on and then go over to the side and then take the glasses off and put a hat on and then go over to the side and put a coat on and like doing this one man show as they're recording these books. And it's just too over the top for me. I just, I need some distinction between the characters voices and that's it. Do the inflex inflections and, um, and such when you're reading where they should be. And that's, and that's cool. And there's a lot of people that do a really good job of it. Um, I'll just give one example as to how I was pulled out of the story from a narrator standpoint. And that is, that's from listening to Lightbringer, the series. I tried to, to listen to that twice on audiobook and DNF'd it twice because even though I was really enjoying the magic system and the world and the characters weren't too bad either, the narrator pulled me out of it. It, I always like to say there's an example of it felt like the first actor that played, um, Dumbledore was reading me a story and I just kind of wanted to go to sleep. And then not only is the voice actor, he's, he's pretty, um, he's pretty famous. Actually. He, he does a lot of narration. People love him. So that's the, that's another subject thing. This is just my opinion. People love who narrates that, but I didn't because the voices were too much. He already has like somewhat of an old man voice. And then when he did a voice of another old man, but he was an old man that was like a, an older guy that was a, an old general, a warrior, and is still like a big hulking person that was supposed to be somewhat intimidating. His old man voice made me think of a decrepit old man. And I did not, I was not able to picture this intimidating large general who was still fighting people. It was just a decrepit old man. I was like, how the hell is this person doing what he's doing? He's a decrepit old man. So that's when character voices kind of pull it out for me. And there are some other books that I listen to, some, some of the on the YA side that I, th I think are, that they try way too hard with the, with the voices. But that's just my thoughts on um, audiobook narration. Another one, uh, as I'll get into it, I'm listening to going through the Saxon uh, saga. So uh, if you're familiar with The Last Kingdom, I consumed the first three books and, narr and the narrator is Jamie Glover. Then I went to purchase the fourth book and I started listening to it and it sounded vastly different. I look at it and I realize this is a completely different voice actor. And I didn't even make it to the first chapter because it was just so different for me. And I, I just wasn't a fan of it. Now that could also be because I, I don't know who the other person was. I think honestly, it's just after you've listened to a series with one voice after a while, you kind of just want the consistency of the same voice. You know, I'm not, if I started the series with that voice, the, the other person, then it would have been, it could have been the other way around. I don't know. But that's just an example of how much a narrator can impact listening is this is the same story, different uh, uh, person. And I had to return the book and find the version of it with the narrator that I was used to. And then I was, I hit, hit the ground running and, and got right back into it. But finding the right person's voices and narration is uh, a big deal. So having said all of that with audiobooks, how I view some of them and how they can be super subjective, I'm going to give some of my um, recommendations of audiobooks that I really like. One thing else that I've done with audiobooks that uh, I think is also a good, good thing to do is choose some larger series. Like if you're in audiobooks, choose some larger series that has the same uh, narrator throughout. Because once you start with a series with the same narrator, you know you're going to like it for the rest of the time and that's just all of the audiobooks that you know you'll and you're once you're used to the narrator you'll be able to listen to either it either faster because i like to listen to it at you know 1.8 speed so i can listen to them a lot faster since i'm already in tune with that narrator but whenever i switch to a different book a different narrator i have to back the speed off a little bit to get my brain to adapt and then i go and I speed it up but if you're already adapted then i can just hit the ground running and good to go 
So uh, the first one, and this is, it's really popular for a lot of people. Uh, a lot of people consume it through audiobook because the narrator is so good. And I, and this is one of those times that I definitely agree. And that's the Dresden Files by, I believe James Marsters is the narrator. He does a fantastic job. I think his voice for Harry is fantastic. They have some other character demon voices that are just like, you know, demon voices are supposed to be kind of out, out and weird, but other people's voices, they're, they're somewhat normal. You know, the women, he might put a little bit of feminine touch to it, a little bit of higher pitch, but he doesn't do anything crazy. Uh, I think everything that he does with his character voices and the action and um, when Harry's yelling and the snarky side of it and sar sarcasm, he does a fantastic job. Also with Dresden, there are, what, 17 or 18 of those books out now, all the way till it's going to be up to like 23 or 24. So once you get into it, you'll be into it and you'll always be able to go back and fall back into those, uh, to the Harry Dresden books. The next one that I like is The Expanse. Again, another longer series. I think it's seven or eight books now, and the books are really big themselves. And that is narrated by Jefferson Mays. He does also a fantastic job because throughout the crew, there's within the crew, there's four of them, and they each have enough different of a personality, and uh, their voices are done really, really well. Uh, Alex just has a little bit of Southern twang. Um, he does the other characters very uh, well also. It's been a while since I've listened to those. I, 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 those are some of the ones that I would listen to a couple of years ago, but I know they are really, really good if you wanted to get into The Expanse. Also, I think sometimes with the heavier sci-fi series, it's really good to get it to do audiobook because they can be a little bit more either complicated or you know sometimes they're dragged out. Sometimes they just have really complicated terms and people, somebody speaking it for you. And I longer, drier times with books, especially if they're highly technical, I kind of just need to get through. So with audiobook, at least somebody else is reading it for you and you can either speed it up or, or, or whatnot. But those I would recommend if you were thinking of getting into the expanse and you like audiobooks. Next one, Saxon Saga, I already mentioned. Fantastic uh, job narrating those. There's not a whole lot of crazy voices or anything that's going on. It's very storyteller-like. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I think the pronunciations are really good. I would really, I, if I had, if I had to try and read this book, I would have pronounced a lot of things wrong. All of these Viking terms and, and such. I just think that it would have been really hard for me to do that. And I know some people, you know, sometimes they have to read things that are a bit uh, difficult because you want to see the word. The next one is the Legend Trilogy by Marie Lu. I'm not sure who the narrators are, but if you're unfamiliar with Legend, there's two POVs, a male and a female, and they kind of uh, interconnect a few times throughout the stories and they go parallels and, and, and work together and stuff like that. But how the audiobook is, because there's one male, one female um, character or POVs, the narrators actually got a male and a female POV for or a narrators for those. So I think that really elevated the, learn, the uh, reading experience or the listening experience because when you were on the males ones, you knew it was the male because the because because the guy's voice was saying. Then when you switched to the girl, it was the girl's voice that was that was that was speaking that was narrating. So that really helped the the listening experience, and that really distinguished the characters so well. Uh, I always recommend this one, even if people wanted to re want to read it. I would say you know check out the audiobook because they are fantastic, because the narration experience really really does well. Next, the arc of the scythe. The narrator for this once again. Fantastic job. There's not a whole lot of voices to do in this, but there are when the, uh, I, the, uh, there's chapters with the Thunderhead, which is like a, an AI and the different, the little bit of different voice that they do with the AI is really, really well and helps enhance just picturing how an AI might talk and think then how some other, uh, people talk. I think the is well done with the small inflections that, that he does, uh, doing the series. It is, a, it is a really good read. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, the Scythe series. My wife listened to the first two, and then we had we owned the the third book. And I actually just read the third book just because it was um, it came out before the audiobook, and I wanted to and I wanted to get through it. But she started reading it and decided that because she liked the audiobook so much, and because she already did the other ones as audiobook, she just went ahead and finished it on audiobook. Uh, another one, Legacy Fleet. This is another a six book sci fi series that is. Kind of a fun, it's, it's a really fun uh, sci-fi series. It's space battles. 
Uh, nothing too, too crazy. Not like a, a giant space opera. There's not a whole lot of POVs going on, but it was a really fun read or listen to. This is back when I first started again, when I was just like, yeah, cool space battles. I'm just throw this one in there. So if you can check out Legacy Plate, I think these are going to be cheaper. They might even be on Kindle Unlimited. I'm not completely sure. But the narrator for that, also very good. I almost thought it was the same narrator as The Expanse because they're both space in space and the narrator sounded similar. It's not, but they are very similar. So if you like The Expanse narrator, uh, Jefferson Mays, then you might like this one as well. Last one for fantasy. I, I'll just do a little caveat on this one, but it is Throwing the Glass. This is like one of the first ones that I started listening to when I was doing my commute. The premise of the book sounded awesome. And I know Throwing the Glass gets, gets some hate out there and uh, some parts is very justified. But if you are going to listen to Throwing the Glass and some Jer Sarah J. Mass, the narrator for this, she does a fantastic job. I think it's important to have uh, that, not, that really good female uh, voice because most of the time you're in the female's head. And her uh, narration is very, very well. Uh, she mostly only does YA books, but for the Throw in the Glass series, she did a very good job with it. Also, for why I said it's good to listen to Sarah J. Mass on audiobook, because there's that 30-second skip button when the uh, romance and stuff scenes come up. So I was tapping that a lot throughout the series. But the narrator, she does a she does a very good job on Throw in the Glass. So if you're ever thinking about picking it up or finishing it. I go with that way. The last ones I'm going to mention, they aren't fantasy or fiction. These are um, nonfiction audiobooks because I do do those. And I just wanted to put some out there because they are done fantastically. The first one would be Art of Resilience. And this one, it's a good segue because it's actually a really awesome story and it's very entertaining. He has some really funny moments. You're actually going with him as he's swimming around uh, Great Britain. So he, he narrates his own books. I think these three that I'm doing, yeah, the three that I'm mentioning, they author narrates their own books, which I think really adds another element to it. So Art of Resilience is fantastic. Any book by Gary Vandercheck, Gary V is fantastic. His books are awesome with, you know, building your, your content, your social media, your website, whatever you're doing. If you want to achieve something on your own, especially on the online web space, Gary V is one to completely check out. And he is so enthusiastic. And while he's reading his own books, he even goes off on his own side tangents that aren't in the physical books. So those are great. And lastly, Extreme Ownership or any Jocko book. Uh, he does a lot on ownership and leadership and things like that. He narrates his own. He's got a very deep, intense baritone of a voice and listening to his, you kind of grasp um, how, how he's feeling, how he's going through it. And he does, he does uh, reference a lot of military and military content. So I think that just adds another layer to it, how, how he delivers it. So those are some of my favorite uh, books for audiobooks and how I like to consume mine. Uh, what are some of your favorite audiobooks, some of your favorite narrators? What do you like in your audiobooks? What don't you like in your audiobooks? Well, let me know in the comments and we can chat about it more there.